As you can see on your iPad, you all will have the App Store already installed when you get it. Go ahead and find the Sketchbook Pro app from there. I already have it on my iPad, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. Okay. And you can see that the first thing that I open up to in Sketchbook Pro is my library. Uh, on the lower half are all the drawings that I've been working on. On the upper half are folders. I'm just going to kind of tap through them where I've organized my work. Okay, if you want to create a new folder or library, you can just plus, press the plus symbol and click on it and that will allow you to make new drawings inside of that folder. You can also press on the name and um, you can say, let's say, we'll call it classwork. Okay, and then you can rename it. So I'm already inside of classwork. So I'm gonna go ahead down to the plus symbol at the bottom and I'm gonna say, I want a new sketch. Okay, I'm gonna do the default preset that Sketchbook Pro has. I'm going to press create. And what I have here now is the interface. Okay. Now I just want to show you real quick. I'm going to rotate. You can see when I rotate my iPad, I put it in portrait mode rather than landscape, that some of the icons on the top disappear. Okay. So you can see this, it's the top menu area where it's not as robust as it is when I have it landscape or horizontal. Okay, so sometimes if you want some sort of menu feature and you can't find it, it might be just good to rotate your iPad into landscape position and then you can see the um, icons that you need again. Okay, so what I have here is I have a little palette. Um, this has the color that I'm using, okay? and the brush that I'm currently using, using a smudged round brush. Um, where I access that is this tiny little, almost invisible dot at the bottom, which gives you little, little tiny shortcut tools. Okay, so eyedropper to pick color, color picker. Um, this is for transparent color, okay, or transparency. This is to move to your last brush. This is to either get the puck or not. So I want that puck back, that's what it's called. So this would be my color and then also the brush that I'm using. Okay, and then also working with over here, the last one is working with mirror image, which you do more for patterns. You're not gonna use that as often, okay? Actually gonna go back up to my puck and I'm gonna get a color in there. So I'm gonna pick a violet. Now just while I'm on color, you can see there's two ways to pick color in Sketchbook Pro, which I really like. You can either go to the color wheel, so you can go to your color category. Let's say I'm going to reds. You can decide if you want it more tinted, which is towards white, or more shaded, which is towards black, okay? Or that if you want a tone, which is adding gray to that color, so you can decide how toned you want it. That's kind of a traditional way of picking color. It works a lot like a paintbrush. Here are the Copic markers. This is a kind of marker that illustrators usually use. They're design markers. So if you have a set of your own at home, this might be what you wanna do because they translate specifically to ones that you can buy in the store. I prefer to go this direction because these are the types of illustration markers that I buy. I also get Prismas colors and the corresponding um, labels and types of colors are, are usually uh, very similar. I like it because sometimes I scan in my drawings into Sketchbook Pro and so therefore I can match everything really easily. Okay. On this side, we have the, I'm gonna press on it a little bit, that is layers, okay? So here is your first background canvas layer. When you press on this circle here, the color palette comes up and you can change the background color pretty easily. Here is just a layer, they're usually transparent, and it works very similar to, if any of you have used Photoshop, it works very similar to Photoshop, um, where you can copy, you can paste, you can merge the layers, and you can make some color adjustment. You can also use the blending modes, which are common in Photoshop as well, okay? On this side is your main library, okay? 
and you can scroll through brushes and different kinds of sets. You can see that you'll get the basic set with spray paint, markers, pencils. You'll even get different sorts of patterns and textures that you can use for illustration, which is kind of fun, splatter techniques, glowing effects, a whole category of smudge brushes, and then even things that are artistic or painterly. So for example, a fan brush here or watercolor wash, blending. Okay, so these are all things that you would use if you were more or less doing like a watercolor painting. If you're, let's say, gonna work maybe on a watercolor type of drawing, um, you can pick a brush, then you can press that pin, and that's what the preset will be over here. So now those are the main brushes that you're gonna work with, okay? And you can see with my puck, it's in there as well, okay? Here is where you can adjust the size and the opacity of whatever brush you're using. I'm using a pencil, okay? If I take the opacity down, it looks like that. If I take the size down, it looks like that. Kind of gives you a brief idea. Up here we have some various selections tools. Again, these work very similar to what Photoshop, what happens in Photoshop. Here's where you can transform and move the selection. This is your paint bucket where you can put a complete fill. The next one is a paint bucket, a fill inside of a shape. Some kind of measuring and mirror and shape com commands. Okay, open these up, guides. And then here is where you can import a photo. So you can see here I have my photo library. I can use one of these photos as a source. I can use a section of it. I can trace the entire thing, um, just use a part or even eyedropper color, or I can even import a drawing, okay? To put that in that's a perspective grid we can add text and this is where you can save if I am trying to draw and I don't need to see all this on my screen I can just press this button here that will all go away I can move my puck to the side and then I have a clearer canvas okay when I'm done with sketching on the surface of or I if I want to save it and work on it later all I have to do is go to this menu here I can press gallery or I can even press share if I was done I can save it to my photos okay I'm not going to do that because I'm not finished so instead I'm just going to say gallery and then it's going to ask me right there if I want to save it I'm going to say yes and it's going to go right into my classwork folder okay I can even press on this here and retitle it if I want um, when I'm ready okay um, that just gives you a quick little overview of the tools in Sketchbook Pro. Um, we are going to be learning a lot more in the workshop and also working from start to finish of a drawing of your own. Okay?